Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's PeopleStream webinar, Compensation and Remuneration. Get rid of your spreadsheets. So the reason we've done this webinar is we did a company webinar about two weeks ago about doing one-on-one -on -one for your end of year reviews and there was a lot of interest in actually reward management, compensation and how to go about doing that properly. So uh, on the line today we do have a special guest, Glizal from Curo. Glizal, how are you this morning? I'm great. How are you this morning? Very good. Actually, guys, Glizelle is in the US, so it's night time for her there. So it's really great to still have her on the line today. Just a little bit about Glizelle. So she is from um, Curo and is a compensation specialist at Curo. So she's had a lot of experience with re reward management. And um, Glizelle, do you want to maybe give us a little bit of a background about you and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So I've actually been working in the compensation arena for about 20 years now. Um, I've worked with several different solutions out there, but specifically working with compensation and reward professionals, just trying to make sure that any solutions that are put in place are actually ex uh, managing the expectations of a customer in terms of the types of award strategies that they're trying to execute within those solutions. Awesome. And we also have, of course, Lyle, CEO here at PeopleStream. Lyle, how are you this morning? Oh, very well. And I think this has become uh, a very interesting space. Uh, so the reason we put getting rid of your spreadsheets is there are significant uh, issues in terms of privacy if you're emailing around uh, compensation, mm -hmm. I guess, spreadsheets. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that, but I think this is highly topical in Australia. We definitely have uh, people in the audience who are uh, joining us from other countries, so uh, from Asia. Um, so we really appreciate you attending, and if you have, I guess, questions specific to your geography, mm -hmm. we're happy to take those questions uh, via the chat window. Yeah. So we're going to hand this over to uh, Glizelle now, as she is the expert in this space. So Glizelle, I'm going to ask you to uh, take it away. Yeah, absolutely. So for today's agenda, we'll basically be covering this in, um, in essence, three parts. The first part is just talking about good versus bad reward, man reward management. And then we'll go into a conversation about linking compensation with employee performance as well as company performance. And then finally, looking at what it's going to take to actually get rid of your spreadsheets and the advantages that you'll have by doing so. So again, first we're going to cover the idea of good versus bad reward management. Let's first talk about what bad reward management might look like. First of all, in a world where budgets are limited and competition for good talent can be tough, companies can't make the mistake of falling into the trap of the peanut butter spread approach, lacking any pay differentiation. Also, it can be easy to just keep doing what we've been doing and have no real strategy that focuses on what's happening in our market today. As an extension of these, some companies will also find it easier to look at budgeting as simply a way to manage their overall expense rather than putting some thought into where the budget should be spent. And even if you're not working directly with compensation, you've no doubt heard about the shift in focus on pay equity and diversity. So it would be a mistake not to have this in mind when managing rewards. It would also be a mistake not to empower managers or worse yet, to give managers responsibility over compensation decisions without the proper education and training. And then finally, bad reward management would likely also mean poor communications overall. Now let's talk about what good reward management should look like. Good reward management focuses on outcomes and not allowing yourself to get lost in the process. It also ensures that strategic context is reinforced throughout your process. It's not just about laying out the rules, but understanding how the rules or guidelines help to guide stakeholders in making decisions that align with their compensation strategies. And also important to consider is um, pay as your talent, consider pay as your talent insurance, 
What I mean by that is that you need to know who your high performers are, knowing what key talent is needed to drive your business and the critical roles that they belong in, and then considering their market positioning as you know who is most at risk. It's also important to have an eye towards pay equity and ensure that you're taking steps to address any inequities necessary. Good reward management also tries to move from an HR owned process to one that empowers and engages managers. Understanding that the majority of pay conversations are already happening between managers and their employees. So it's important to empower these managers with the proper education and tools. And then a conversation about pay transparency can't happen without good communication. Again, it's about education and engagement, and it's become more evident that employees are getting their information from various sources. So you need to be control of that conversation. And then finally, always consider compensation as a part of the broader reward package. Those that have been in the rewards management for a while understand that the broader picture helps to build your company culture and support its values. So with that, let's shift our focus to the idea of linking compensation to performance. Why is it important to link compensation to performance in some way? This is an interesting topic considering that for several years now, doing away with performance rating has been, seemed to be all the rage. But those of us in rewards find that we still have to somehow have the link to performance. Maybe we just change our definitions of what performance actually means. I don't know if you guys have actually seen a little bit of that um, within Australia as well, but I know this is kind of a worldwide trend. Um, but ultimately, taking the time to manage our investment in compensation properly leads to improved employee morale, which leads to better employee engagement, which can lead to improved retention of key talent, which in turn leads to a stronger competitive position in the marketplace, which then leads to better alignment of resources for companies for the company's objectives, which ultimately will lead to improved business performance. And compensation still continues to play an important role in attracting and retaining key talent. Even amidst all of the recent studies that seem to show that employees are more, more motivated by other things such as personal development and a sense of purpose, pay and financial benefits are still an important part of the mix. But because people still seem to be afraid of the topic, what we found is that compensation seems to cause more confusion when companies aren't proactive about their strategies and communications. High impact compensation is about maximizing the impact of every dollar spent, and it can act as a strategic lever that can be used to meet conflicting objectives. So when you reward measurable high performance and results at both an individual and at the business level, you can motivate high potentials to strive to achieve more and it can help you to attract and retain key talent in your business. So let's talk about how we can define the success of your pay performance strategy. First, you need to start by identifying measurable business goals. Consider the company's overall objectives and then break that down into clear measurable goals. It's a good idea to identify your business goals for the next several years and think about what it will take to achieve those goals. The next step would be to ensure there is an alignment between the goals of each level of the organization to your company goals. This would be a good time to stop and consider how you're currently rewarding your employees against those goals. You should look at all reward elements and ensure there is a linkage to the overall business objectives across the board. And then considering the business strategy and goals, define what would be acceptable levels of performance. Incorporating some sort of a structure and data-driven system for setting targets at all levels can help to establish equity in target setting. And finally, the overriding key element here is transparency. The more transparent you are in linking employee achievement to financial or business outcomes, the better. Employees need to clearly see the connection between their own work and the overall objectives of the company. And ultimately, transparency in a company in, in a compensation practices builds trust between managers and employees and ensures a sense of accountability throughout the organization while still improving the overall employee experience and employer brand. Yeah, so I should probably uh, talk to this one. Um, so 
This is a typical performance management uh, process and exactly as Gazelle was saying before, alignment is critical, transparency and being able to see how my work contributes to the overall strategy is really important. Mm -hmm. That then links to compensation. So in Australia, we typically run a financial year which is July through to June in different geographies, there are different financial years, but the process remains the same. So. Is the essence of it is at the beginning of the financial period or fiscal year, you typically say, okay, we're going to create some goals. Some people call them objectives. Some people call them KRIs. Yep. There's a whole range of different um, words you can use. Um, once we've set those, then it's ideal that the manager and the employee are having a dialogue every single month in what we call one-on-ones to ensure that both are on the same page as far as how they're tracking to achieving their goals or objectives. And you set the status of that every month to say, hey, you're on track, this one's green, this one's orange, this one's red. So you start building in a, a corporate uh, thinking, uh, whether you're for-profit, not-for-profit, government, it doesn't really matter. You're driving alignment, you're making sure that people are really clear. Um, you can optionally, if you're doing the one-on-ones, you can have a mid-year review or not have a mid-year review. In other words, you can just do a, a one-on-one conversation. And leading up to those reviews, it's really good practice to actually help your managers um, in how to actually conduct a review, but also then how is it going to probably impact on compensation. So getting that transparency that Gazelle was just talking about. When we do the end of financial year review, we typically have the compensation remuneration connection at that particular point. Mm -hmm. So in Australia, it might be that, uh, you know, your compensation is run in August and, and September. Uh, in some of the Asian countries, there will be different fiscal periods, different years, but that's not really material. The concept and the principles material, that is, we drive a really transparent, clean process um, all the way through the year, so we're connecting, engaging, aligning employees constantly, and then it should be no surprise at the end of the year when you're running your compensation calculations to say, you know what, um, I knew this was going to be exactly what my outcome was or yep. is because it's pretty close to uh, the conversations we've been having during the year. Bad compensation management and bad performance management is no dialogue all the way through the year, get to the end and it's a surprise to the manager and the employee as to what the outcome is. So on that note, I'll probably hand back to Glazelle. I don't know if you want to add anything there. Yeah, I'd say the only other thing that I've also noticed is um, going, kind of going along with that notion of monthly check-ins with your managers and employees, we've also found a, a trend to start looking at compensation year-round and even managing to things like spot bonuses and increases throughout the year or possibly switching to quarterly awards. So again, they're seeing the fruits of their labor sooner than later and they're consistently tracking throughout the year to goals that can continue to be reset as their uh, positions start to change as well. Good. Okay. And then we can't talk about affecting our bottom line through our compensation strategies without first realizing that we need to view compensation as an investment rather than just a cost or an expense. When it comes to managing compensation rewards, it's very easy to focus on cost management or containment. We often refer to it as our largest expense, and it can be up to about 80% of our overall cost. So sometimes we think that increases in pay are just a cost of doing business. But we need to shift our thinking and choose our words carefully. Rather than thinking about minimizing our costs, we need to focus on optimizing our investment. And ultimately, that investment is in our employees. And in the end, the key to high impact compensation strategies is realizing that it maximizes the correlation between an individual's performance and the business's performance, in turn delivering value to both employees and the employer. So we've talked to many, we've talked to many organizations about their reward strategies, and we understand that many continue to struggle to show a clear ROI on reward. You would think that for reward functions, even more than any other function in HR, it should be easy to show hard numbers to prove to management that our reward practices are really having a positive impact. But if you look at all of these questions, how many of us can honestly say we can provide solid evidence to support the answers to these key questions? 
And when it comes to focusing on activities required to optimize our reward function, it would be good for us to spend less time on the items in the orange box and more time focused on the things that we need to do in the blue box. Although the activities in the orange box are still meaningful, spending too much time in those tasks of policing takes us away from our ability to spend time strategizing and ensuring that our programs are the right programs for our current organization. So to that end, for many of you, that means we need to talk about getting rid of our beloved spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. With all this information, we should, um, what should your focus be on when you're looking at compensation technology? In addition to ensuring that our compensation programs are designed to achieve your organization's business strategies, your compensation technology should not only help you to manage these strategies, but it must also meet these primary objectives. The most apparent should be efficiency. The technology should help to control labor costs and time spent managing the processes, but it should also make it easier for managers to allocate compensation and then reduce the amount of time that comp analysts take to obtain meaningful analytics or model pay plan options. Your compensation technology should also help to ensure effectiveness of the programs by helping to improve outcomes. This may be through clear communications of the metrics being used and the resulting effects on one's pay. And as we discussed, this transparency can also help to improve employee engagement. The solution should also help to ensure that employee contributions are assessed and rewarded fairly and equitably according to the same standard and without any bias. And then finally, the technology should help to ensure compliance with laws and regulations that are applicable where your organization operates and that any risks are mitigated by ensuring accuracy and data integrity. And additionally, the proper compensation technology should provide many benefits, including the availability of data, integration and data integrity, full audit trails and automated workflow, real-time rewards where needed, especially as our performance management processes evolve, evidence-based businesses, business enablers, as well as the support of reward segmentation, clear communications at all appropriate levels, and then finally understanding what a company's compensation is, that a company's compensation is an investment to op be optimized rather than just a cost to be minimized. Now, compensation technology should help to reduce the time and effort it takes to manage your process through dashboards and analytics available throughout the process. It's important not to get bogged down in the low value tasks and to make sure your compensation technology helps to streamline and automate processes to free you to focus on high impact activities. For managers, that obviously means your solution should provide some automation, specifically by helping to drive planning and approval workflows. But the automation for managers might also include varying approval processes for different types of awards, and then the ability to quickly deal with exceptions and any approvals or justifications for those exceptions. For HR and compensation, the technology should also provide automation of the paid decision process, but being careful not to compromise on your compensation strategy due to any limitations within the technology. This could include ongoing data integration as well as flexible workflow management and communications. And as we mentioned before, successful execution and communication of the compensation strategy helps to foster champions in your, of your pay brand. Additionally, the team should have continuous oversight into the planning process and be alerted of any situations that might need their attention, including any overrides that might need HR approval or alerts that may indicate managers are not appropriately allocating their compensation investment. And as mentioned before, there should be a focus on equity throughout the organization and your solution should empower stakeholders while providing guidance to ensure contrib contributions are assessed and rewarded fairly. I like to refer to this as freedom within the framework. Your compensation technology should also help managers to align rewards to top contributors and allow for calibration and collaboration as needed. And then for HR and compensation, the solution should also provide meaningful insights into the quality and equity of the decisions being made as, as they are being made. Ideally, these are available throughout the process rather than only as reports at the end of the process so that the team can help to mitigate any issues along the way. 
Now, your technology should also be effective in managing to your objectives and thereby improving your outcomes. This may be in the form of incentive plans that are based on actual organizational goals and individual goals that help to achieve the organizational goals. It may also be in the form of budget distributions and guidelines that help allocate your compensation investment appropriately. And then for managers, that means that your solution should be able to easily link employees' efforts to their key metrics and objectives even manage, and even manage to changes in those metrics based on changes in the employee's responsibilities. And perhaps more importantly, for HR and compensation, the technology should give the team the ability to change their compensation strategy as needed. In the midst of our evolving workforce with changing motivations and initiatives, it's important for the compensation team to be able to change their strategy accordingly. And finally, your compensation technology should ensure compliance through continued conformance with laws and regulations. This could include, but not limited to, data privacy regulations, as well as system and data audit requirements. Whether these are based on actual regulations or company policies, it's important to make sure that your system supports this too. Yeah, that's an interesting topic. I might just uh, comment on that. So, given that we're hosting this webinar, uh, firstly in Australia, but it's reaching multiple jurisdictions, um, there is a significant privacy risk in emailing spreadsheets to managers <clears throat> because if you do have a data breach in Australia, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to notify the privacy commissioner of a data breach. So that's not an ideal position you want to be in. So I'll give you a practical example. You send out a spreadsheet, you send it to a manager, it sits in the manager's inbox. The manager, unfortunately, returns it not to you but to somebody else on the company email list. Um, guess what? You've got a data privacy breach. Um, you need to notify the commissioner. Um, so the normal process we've seen with spreadsheets is people take a spreadsheet, they break it up into uh, 50 pieces because I'm emailing to 50 managers and that may contain data relating to, you know, 10 times that amount of people. Um, so it's not such a cool thing to have a data breach. <clears throat> it's not, not such a cool thing to have to notify the commissioner. And certainly in your position as a manager or in your position as a compensation analyst or re re remuneration specialist, um, it's not something you want to do. So there are different rules and regulations depending on the jurisdiction. We've got the GDPR of the EU. In the Philippines, we have a different set of legislation, the same in Singapore. but. The point is, uh, if you're using spreadsheets today, you're operating in a high-risk environment, which uh, yeah, isn't such a desirable thing uh, because the penalties have got more severe over time yeah. than previously. Yeah. That's all yeah, I have definitely. To say and I would say that the other thing that I would add to that is that I think a lot of other jurisdictions, a lot of other countries, are really following suit. So you're seeing that that type of regulation exists in a lot more places than it would have a few years ago. And I think that's going to continue to grow. Yeah, yeah, and people are pretty sensitive about their pay being put out on the dark web. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So okay, in summary, sorry. we wanted to just conclude, sorry, did you want to go ahead and cover? No, go ahead, Glazelle. I was going to just say, um, so in summary, this actually concludes our webinar. Um, performance and compensation remuneration add a huge amount of value to the organization. If you're manual or if you're using spreadsheets, consider, consider moving to some sort of technology to help you systematize your approach. And then, of course, looking at all the different advantages that you get from doing that as well um, through various supported feedback mechanisms and so on. Yeah, and I think the, um, the entire process, uh, we've seen a lot of organizations are manual, believe it or not. Yep. A lot are uh, regionalized, so we use the spreadsheet in Australia. We, we have 20 employees sitting in another jurisdiction. We do that uh, manually or on a spreadsheet. Um, so it's a kind of disaggregated approach, but the real thing we're talking about here is having a, a strategic approach to managing compensation. So aligning people, connecting them through um, their goals and objectives, connecting the remuneration strategy to that so that we're really clear about that. Um, and then 
exporting data, for example, from the payroll system into your uh, technology to do your compensation, and then re-importing it back into payroll. So it's kind of a much cleaner process than uh, yeah, pushing stuff around on disaggregated spreadsheets and trying to stitch it back together um, when you get them back, if you get them back. Yeah. So let's just go to the next page here, Elijah, do you want to speak to this as well? Yeah, so on the, uh, if you go to our, if you need more information, you'd like more information, if you go to our website, you can actually request a demo, for example, on performance management um, and compensation, and we'll be in touch with you to actually have a dialogue about it and indeed, um, you know, organise a demonstration for you if you're interested in that. Um, if you're not interested in that and you just want some more information, talk to somebody about putting in place a strategy, do the same thing, but just be clear when we ring you, um, you'd like to talk to somebody about the compensation strategy. But at the end of the day, we're really trying to help people, I guess, move from what was cool in the early 2000s mm. to something that is uh, more rigorous, clearer, focused, proper strategy, uh, and the right tools so that you aren't in uh, the risk of a data privacy breach. Yeah. So we are going into our, our Q&A. We do have a few questions come through. If you've got questions, please ask them now. So a question has come through, would frequent change once every two months on performance measurement matrix be a bad thing for the employee's motivation and performance? Um, I mean, that's a, a good question. So they're asking about, uh, you know, I guess we run a lot of webinars, but one we run in particular is on performance management, but I'll answer the question now uh, for the sake of the people on the call. Um, changing and making performance management live is recommended, so that if your objectives change during the year, if uh, a project gets, you know, defocused, you can change the objectives. It may have an impact on the compensation at the end, it may not, but the key is performance is a live thing. Performance isn't something that you want to be static set at the beginning of the year and forget about it for 12 months. It's really about, um, yeah, it's about making it live, clear, concise. And um, does this interface with our payroll system or a payroll system? Yeah, so typically, uh, you know, around the globe there are different payroll systems and you can get a data extract typically from most payroll systems. That data extract then becomes the way that you'd actually import it into a compensation product and then you go through the compensation uh, remuneration depending on the words you use process, as that process is completed, where you've got all the managers to say, you know, I've given Bob a 2% increase, plus I've given him a bonus and I'm within my budget, then an export happens back to payroll, or if it's a small payroll, you could do it manually. So the point of the matter is, um, yes, uh, you typically will have data exports and data imports back to and from payroll. Awesome. And um, we'll probably have time for one more question. If you do have any questions, we, uh, we can get back to you, you can contact us as well and we'd be happy to answer those questions. So somebody asked, we're doing all our reward management on Excel, why should I change, how do we present this to our executive team? Well I think to the executive team, I'll answer and I'm sure Griselle may have some input as well. Excel used to be okay and fine, you know, I guess an environment where you didn't have these compliance risks, now you're moving into an environment where data breaches, uh, the penalties are huge. Um, and in, no matter what the probability is, someone's going to do something that you don't want them to do at some point. They'll email the spreadsheet, not back to you, but back to somebody else in the business, which puts you in a not such a cool position. So we're saying from uh, the risk has increased dramatically with the privacy laws, GDPR, and in Australia and in other countries like Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, the data breach um, penalties are much higher than ever before. Um, and as Gozelle said, it's, it's right around the world now we've got um, things changing in that risk compliance space. So that's the first thing to make them aware of. I think Gozelle clearly articulated that if your compensation is connected to the company's performance, there should be a direct link and your executive should understand that, um, what that link is, why the link's there and what are the drivers, the levers that they can pull to drive performance in the business. Gozelle, did you want to add anything else? Yeah, the only thing I would add to that is also the ability to um, to be able to look at your analytics throughout that process as well, because a lot of the times when you're dealing with 
a distributed process through Excel spreadsheets, you're not able to really take a look at what your overall spend looks like, any of the analytics on pay equity, um, doing any kind of real-time collaboration with other folks. You can't really do that when you've got 50 different spreadsheets floating around and somebody has to consolidate those things together. So a system will help you to consolidate that throughout the process and look at the analytics before they become an issue and actually try to head off some issues before they get submitted. Yeah, awesome. Well, that's really all we have time for this webinar. Um, thank you for everyone for coming. We had a great turnout. Thank you, Glizal, for joining us and being our special guest today. Yeah, we really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Um, hopefully the weather's good in Southern California. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful right now. Thank you very much. All right, guys, so if you have any questions for us or we've missed your question today, that is our contact information on the screen there. Um, and we really hope you enjoyed the webinar. After this, you'll be directed to a landing page where you can access more information um, about remuneration and we've got checklists, videos, all that good stuff for you guys to take a look at. So again, thank you for attending the webinar and we hope to see you in our next webinar in a, in a few weeks. All right. Thank you. See you later, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye.